Okay, we're rolling. This is an interview at the New York State Military Museum, Saratoga Springs, New York. It is the 1st of February 2005, approximately 1.30 p.m. Interviewers are Wayne Clark and Mike Russert. Could you give me your full name, date of birth, and place of birth, please? Um, my name is Robert Lewis Worcester. Uh, I was born November 1st, 1945, on um, this in New York. Okay, what was your educational background prior to entering service? I have up to one year of college. I attended State University of Farmingdale for Advertising Art and Design, and that was from 65 through uh, March of 1966. Okay. Um, did you enlist or were you drafted? I enlisted. And you selected the U.S. Navy. Why did you enlist? Why did you select the Navy? Well, I probably enlisted. Uh, my, my dad's a, an Army veteran of World War II, and he always advised me if I ever have to go into service, go somewhere where you got three square meals a day, heat, not living in a foxhole or eating out of a helmet. So I, I, I took his advice, and that, that's one reason. And also, I didn't relish going uh, in the Army and probably winding up in Vietnam at the time, mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. I joined the Navy. Okay, why did you enlist rather than wait to be, you didn't want to be Well, I, actually, what happened was I uh, had completed that first year of college. Mm -hmm. I got out in uh, uh, March of 66, was in my first year, I was in a trimester period, and then I was to go back in June. Well, in those days, uh, when you went to school, you got a student classification. When you're out of college, even for the summer, you lost it, and uh, I lost my student classification. But I didn't worry too much about it about getting drafted because it was, you know, the Vietnam War was going on pretty good then. And I thought, being that I was on a dean's list at school, it would keep me on. But apparently, I guess it did because I wasn't taking anything really important enough for the country's needs, being in advertising art mm -hmm. design. So uh, while I was on vacation, I started to get letters from the Selective Service Board uh, telling me, you know, uh, basically you're going to be getting drafted. Uh, you you'll won't be able to go back to school. And this dragged out for about a year before I finally got a notice. And then I had, so, uh, I think it was so much time to go and enlist in the branch of my choice. Okay. So I wound up going and I tried the Coast Guard. They didn't take me because I wore glasses. I tried the Navy Reserve. They didn't want me. Uh, Air Force didn't want me, so the Navy took me. Okay. Where did you go for your basic training? Great Lakes, Illinois, Naval Training Center. Uh, how long were you there? I went uh, July of 67 through um, October of 67. Okay. Um, what was your basic training like? Well, for one thing, it was in the summertime, so it was really hot, humid. It was, you know, it was. It was, uh, you were on the go all the time. You never really got a chance to do much for yourself, either drilling or going to classes, learning, you know, naval orientation and um, all kinds of Navy uh, things you might need. Um, it was vigorous, and uh, I couldn't wait to get out. Uh -huh. <laughs> okay. Where did you go from Great Lakes? Uh, I was sent to... Uh, Newport, Rhode Island, uh, Class A Sigleman School, Visual Communications, to become a Sigleman. And I was there until I got out in December. I was there from, well, I got October through December of 67. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, what were the things that you learned there as a, in a signal? Well, we learned how to uh, read and send flashing light, uh, semaphore, sem excuse me, semaphore, which is, you know, uh, sending messages with, fl with two flags. Um, uh, learn how to, you know, Morse code was a big thing. We had to be able to learn Morse code by light, send and receive it. And we just spent hours on end in these quants and huts watching guys send flash and light and recording it. And, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay, where did you go from... Uh I, I was sent to, for active duty on the USS Beatty, DD-756, a destroyer down in uh, Norfolk, Virginia. And I, I was on that for a while. Uh, 
when I got out of Singleman School, they, I, when you go in, you're a, um, I was a S, what they call an SA seaman apprentice. When I got out of Singleman School, I became an, uh, designate, what they call a designated striker. I was SMSA, Singleman Seaman Apprentice. And I was in that rate until I uh, took the correspondence courses and became seaman. And then I was in SMSN for, for a while. Okay, and your duties on the Beatty were as a signalman. Yeah, it wasn't much, well. Being that it was, it wasn't a real active ship. It was like um, tied up most of the time. So what they were doing was they were, it was going to become inactive and become a, a reserve destroyer, which we did, and we were sent to Tampa, Florida. And for the second part of my duty on the on the Beatty, I was stationed in Tampa, and we were just just there for the reserve local reserves. They came once a week and. Um, they took the, the ship over and uh, didn't do too much. I didn't really get that much experience because I, I wasn't seagoing at the time. Okay. Were you still uh, uh, using any of the skills that you had learned uh, uh, in school? Or? Oh, yeah. They kept me practicing. We Certain hours of the day, we'd practice with the flashing light, you know. Mm -hmm. and they, they, But it wasn't much because they, they just weren't doing anything. We were mm -hmm. just tied up there. And, we were like a skeleton crew. We were like caretakers of the vessel for the reserves that came on board, and they they took over. And one weekend a month, they went out to sea for overnight, and I didn't do. I I just was like a. Did you go out to sea with them? Yeah, I went out to sea, but I didn't do anything because they. I was regular Navy, and they all they did was practice, you know, for the overnight mm -hmm. maneuver. Okay, so basically, you were on it just to. To keep a, a skeleton crew for the reserves and basically, yeah. At that point, were you time. on it when it was turned over to the uh, Venezuelan Navy, or no? Uh, what, eventually, I was on it until um, the spring of 1969, and then they decided to really get rid of a lot of the personnel. So then I was state, I was sent to the USS Little Rock, CLG-4 over in the Mediterranean, and I went from one extreme to the other, from very inactive to, you know, so really learning the rate. And uh, that was the uh, flagship of the Mediterranean fleet. Uh, I was on Admiral staff and I then I really got into, into you know, learning how to be a signalman and we were out operations with the NATO fleet and then it really got hot mm -hmm. <laughs> as far as my, you know, ability to become a signalman. Well, you want to tell us about some of your experiences uh, while you were in the Little Rock? Um, well, uh, being that we were the uh, flagship, uh, the Admiral, we would go out with, on occasion, and, and uh, have operations with the rest of us, with elements of Sixth Fleet, including the carrier, J.F. Kennedy. Um, being that we were the flagship, we didn't really participate that much. We were like, we always uh, sailed behind the carrier and, you know, did some operations, but we were always able to break off and do independent steaming, go into some port where the Admiral had to put a party on or a reception for some local dignitary. Um, we went to Monaco, Monte Carlo, several times, and they had, we had Prince Rainier and Princess Grace on board uh, one time. I got to see her, which was pretty, well, it was a really good experience, and Monaco is a beautiful country. Um, we were in Dubrov Dubrovnik, Yugoslavia once, and uh, he had a reception. I don't know. I don't guess it was Tito. Maybe that was in power at the time. Or he always had. Uh, we always went out. He had to do a lot of these receptions and go to these really nice ports and entertain the local uh, politicians or dignitaries. Mm -hmm. So we did a lot of that. We were like a ceremonial ship. It was nice duty. Was there a lot of spit stuff. and polish it? Oh yeah, you had to be uh, pretty well squared away in uniform mm -hmm. and. Uh, you had to know your your rate. You had to be a, had to be a good signalman and that kind of thing. You couldn't get off the ship unless you were, you know, you look good. And your conduct ashore also was important. Okay, you uh, mentioned you had one kind of humorous incident when uh, the Little Rock collided with another ship. Yeah, we were uh, we were in on operations. Uh, it was a I was one of the signalmen on duty, and we were operating with with uh, elements of the 
uh, the fleet, uh, the uh, NATO fleet. We had the Greeks and the uh, Italian Navy with us, and the Netherlands and the English. And it was about uh, four thirty in the morning, and we were it was just getting daylight, and we had a Greek destroyer off our port beam and a, another vessel off the starboard side there. And I was on watch, having me on watch that morning, and I don't know what the reason was, but the Greek destroyer turns starboard, and it went right crossed our, you know, our bow, and we hit it amidships. And um, shortly after that, you know, we, the main hatch opened there up to the signal bridge, and here's, in front of me is the, uh, the whole command, the admiral commanding officer, the Sixth Fleet, standing in his boxer shorts and wondering what the heck happened, you know. <laughs> he was only there for about two minutes, and then he dashed down the hatch again. That's my only experience uh, coming face to face with the admiral. But they had, I, we stopped that and they had one of our, uh, some officers went over and they, there was an investigation. I don't really know how it happened to this day. But we pulled into Valletta Malta and we had some minor repairs done. That's about all I heard about mm -hmm. after that. Okay. Now you mentioned also that you got to see Bob Hope. Yep, uh, we, uh, the Bob Hope USO show came over. And the carrier USS Saratoga, well, first of all, we were home port in Gaeta, Italy, and, uh, which is a small little fishing village uh, between Naples and Rome on the coast there. And uh, the USS Saratoga pulled in, um, and they put the, Bob Hope was there with his USO show, and he pulled, put it on just for us, just for the Admiral and uh, the USS Little Rock. It was quite, quite a show. Was this on the deck of the... Was I, I was on the... Uh, uh, not the main... It was one deck down, what do you call it, the flight deck? No, yeah. the... Uh, I don't hangar know the, deck. The hangar think. deck of the USS Saratoga. You had Connie Stevens and uh, uh, the gold diggers from the Dean Martin show. It was quite a, quite a time, yeah. Now, did you have women aboard your ship, or was it strictly male? The strictly male at that time, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was you know, no women. Um, you said you got to visit many ports that you probably would have never gotten to visit. Could you? Oh, sure. I, you know, we we were at Lisbon uh, a couple times, uh, Barcelona, Dubrovnik, Dubrovnik Yugoslavia, um, Rhodes, Greece, Athens, uh, Valletta, Malta. Oh, gee, there's more. In, uh, Gibraltar, been to Gibraltar several times. Oh, uh, Morocco. There's probably others I can't. We hit all the. It was great duty being the admiral was there, and you know he was the commanding officer of the fleet, and he could go just about anywhere he wanted to. And mm -hmm. he had great tours. The, the chaplain's office on board provided the tours, and uh, mm -hmm. for like a couple of bucks, you'd be going all day. They get a bus, and you can eat at a nice restaurant, and really. Had, if you brought your camera, I got a lot of good shots, got all those good slides of various cities I was in. It was really good. Now, how were you accepted as an American uh, in the military at that time in, in the Mediterranean? Very good. The, the Italians did you wear really civilian clothes or did you... No, oh, excuse me. Uh, no, uh, well, most of the time we were in uniform mm -hmm. and... Uh, it was a t when t towards the end of my tour, I guess when Admiral Zumwalt uh, became the uh, uh, chief naval officer of the Navy uh, with the Z-Grams, uh, we we weren't allowed to have civilian clothes on board up until that point. Then Admiral Staff, which was uh, the signalman and the radio men, us, we were able to you know store them on board. We didn't. I remember. Using them that too, that much though, because usually you had to be in full uniform. Mm -hmm. And Italy was great. The people were very friendly and warm. I everybody every place we went was very nice and had no problems. Uh, they used to tell us if we saw any kind of a communist uh, thing going on in the square or you know in town, we we would stay clear of that kind of element. And uh, but it was a very very good experience. Okay. Um, so you were at sea until you uh, were discharged. Uh, I, yeah, we uh, we were 
we were relieved by our sister ship, the USS Springfield, uh, which was also it was, it was a it was exactly the same type of uh, class of cruiser that we were. They relieved us in August of 1970, and we were done as the flagship. Uh, a lot of guys were transferred off the, the ship, and the Admiral, of course, transferred his flag to the Springfield. We came home. We came back. We, we went to Newport Island first for a short period of time, then we went up to Boston Navy Yard, and went in dry dock, and, and then everything was, we were over, pretty much done with sea duty, and I got out in April 71. I was uh, separated. Okay. Um, after you left the service, did you uh, join any veterans organizations or any no. organizations at all? Uh, I thought about it. I, I never really, I was going to join Vietnam Veterans of America, and I, don't know, I just got lazy. I never really did get involved in anything like mm -hmm. that. Did you ever stay in contact with anyone that was in service with you? I tried to. I uh, wrote some letters to a couple of friends of mine, but I didn't get any response. And we kind of like that was it. Uh -huh. Just. Uh -huh. Then the Little Rock, uh, when the Little Rock was decommissioned in the uh, middle 70s, and I never thought this would happen. It became, a, you might say, a museum piece. It was Right now it's up in Buffalo. It's in a serviceman's park. Yes. With a submarine and uh, they've, the USS Sullivan's destroyer. And I was just up there this April. It's great. And uh, they did a nice job restoring it. And I just never thought that my ship would uh, be in a, mu a museum someday. <laughs> and I also belong to the association. The USS Little Rock has an association. I belong, with them, mm -hmm. belong to them for several years. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm really interested in if they were, if it was closer by, I think I'd volunteer and, you know, be down to the ship a lot, helping out, but mm -hmm. it's just too far. How do you think your time in the service had an effect or changed anything in your life? It made me more mature, grew me up. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's good discipline. I think every young male should probably serve at least a couple of years in the military. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we'll take a look at some of the photographs you... Did you uh, make use of the GI Bill when you got out? Yes, I did. When I uh, when I got out of service, I, I I wanted to take up architectural drafting, and I got a, a job down in Schenectady with Link and Cullen Architects. They took me on as an apprentice under the State in the York Apprenticeship Program. I was able to. At the time I was there, I I collected a GI Bill for a couple of years, mm -hmm. so I didn't. I did a little. I got a little bit out of it, not that much. Mm -hmm. It was good. Okay, this is just a picture. This is the official picture taken in uh, Navy Blue Camp at uh, when I was up at Great Lakes. Okay. Uh, this is another one, another uh, shot of recruit training. Oh, uh, this was taken a couple of years ago. This is up in uh, Buffalo on the Little Rock. I was standing on a signal bridge, and they were. It wasn't quite as restored as as well as it is now. And uh, that's all there is to that. This is a, a photo of the ship up in Buffalo. And these are two more that are and I think you gave us these if mm -hmm. you want to just tell us oh, about those. This, this is a shoulder patch. We wore this on the on the seam of the right shoulder here. It was this little rock. And then I had another one when I was on uh, the Admiral Staff said Com Six Fleet which is the one I wore most of the time. And this is just the rate for Sigelman Seaman. That's the E3 rating. Okay. And then you get promoted to Petty Officer Third Class Sigelman rank. So that's, is that like an E4? This is E4, correct. Okay. And then you have uh, some other things in your... Uh, this is just a little album I've kept uh, over the years of some documents and pictures of uh, um, 
my military service. Um, just, here's some, here's some, I don't know if you can see this, here's some pictures, but I was over with the, some of the crew, and uh, we were in Monaco at the time. When I was in Great Lakes in uh, Navy boot camp training, uh, I was fifth squad leader, which was a recruit petty officer. I was in charge of my squad, mm -hmm. so to speak. And I got this little certificate, and uh, we graduated from uh, boot camp. Now, did you get an extra stripe when you graduated? Yes, uh, this is the one, this is what we wore. It's a small version of a petty officer's insignia. I thought should have in the Navy, regular Navy. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, this was a big day when I uh, on the on the left here. This is the day I left the United States and went overseas. Very sad day. My parents were really upset. <laughs> I was kind of, when I was in the Great Lakes, I was kind of the old man of the company. Because most of the guys were 18, 19 years old. I was uh, 20, 21 years old. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of the old guy to, of the outfit for, for boot camp training. Just what happened was I, I graduated from Lynn High in 63. And in the first couple of years, you know, my parents didn't have any money for college, so I just took some jobs until I went to Farmingdale in 65. And so I was a little older when I, when I enlisted than most guys were at the time. Um, when I was in uh, Galleta, we were able to have an apartment ashore. And these are just some shots. Well, some of them are in Rome, and these are of, the, of our apartment. In Guyana. Um, I don't know if this might be a view here, just this is a shot of my uh, document stating I became a petty officer when I was on a little rock over in the Mediterranean. That's what uh, we were issued, and just some third class insignias. And these are the two shoulder patches that we had to wear. Mostly everything else in here are just uh, copies of my discharge and separation papers. Um, I also have my, my dad who was, a, like, like I said, was an Army veteran of World War II. This was his, some of his documents. Uh, his, he was with the 98th Division, 389th, 389th Infantry. And I guess that's about it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for your interview. Sure.